Hello and welcome to part 3 of my Sega Genesis coding series. In this episode, we'll be adding a whole bunch of rings moving under a basic physics simulation. I'm assuming you've watched part 2 and have already followed the instructions for getting started. For this episode, there's a new zip file linked in the description for this video that contains replacement gamehut.s and system.s files. I'd back up your old copies first and then unzip these new ones over the top of the old ones. OK, so let's take a look at what's new. OK, so in the system.s file, I've added some new code uh, to process rings. There's an initialization function, processing rings, a function to add a ring. So that's already in there ready to use and I'll show you how to use it. Um, I've also added a get random number function, which will get a random number. Here's a table with a bunch of random numbers in it. So they're just a couple of useful functions that we'll use when we're writing this bit of code. So moving on to gamehut.s, this is the file that you'll mess with uh, the most. I've added a new line here to copy the ring graphics into video RAM. And down here I've got a ring graphic set here that's four blocks. So it's a 16 by 16 graphic. And also I've added a few extra colors to Sonic's palette, some uh, golden colors, uh, so we can color the ring yellow. I've also changed the way sprites are drawn to enable it to call this function proc ring, which after we've drawn Sonic, will add any rings that we need to draw. That's calling the function that we saw before in system.s. So that's just called every frame to update any rings that we might have added. Okay, so to add a ring, we're gonna add some code below where we read the joystick for movement. And now we're gonna read the joystick button A. And if it's pressed, we're gonna add a ring. Now to do that, we have to set up some registers. So we're going to put, for this example, Sonic's X position into register D3, Sonic's Y position into register D4, and then we've got a couple more registers. Uh, we've got X momentum, which we're going to set to zero in D5, and in D6, also set to zero for now, Y momentum, and also in D7, gravity. So when we've done all that, we can then jump to the subroutine add ring and let's see what that does if we run the code. Okay, so we can move around the Sonic and now when we press the A button, we can leave behind a trail of rings. So every time we press A, it'll add a ring. If we hold A down, it'll add lots in a, in a row. So there you go, rings, lots of sprites. But we can, uh, we can start doing a few more interesting things with this code. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so let's have a look at what happens if we change gravity. I'm going to change it to a thousand hexadecimal, which seems like a massive number, but we're using big numbers so we can get precision because the Sega system doesn't support floating point numbers. So we have to use big integers and then shift down the results at the end, which is all handled for you. So you don't need to worry about that in the code. So running that code, let's see what happens. We can move around and then we press the button. Look, there you go. So the rings drop under gravity. Now you can see as they fall, that they can, if I go down here and drop them, they can clip around the top of the screen. I haven't done any clipping code for this. This is all just to make it as simple as possible. Let's just drop a load down there. You can see they're dropping under gravity. And by changing that number, go into the code, change that thousand to different numbers and see what happens. Uh, you get some quite interesting effects. Okay, and now let's change the X momentum. So let's put in, say, 20,000 hex decimal into there. Give that a run and let's see what that does to the code. So when I move around now, when I press the button, you can see they have an X momentum. So they're being pushed forwards, being shot out by Sonic. You see there, as I move down the screen, you can see the sprite limitations. You can see it's tearing just ahead of him. Now that's a hardware issue where the Sega Genesis is only able to draw 20 sprites on a given line. If you try and draw more than that, they won't be visible and you get that tearing effect. And it's an interesting effect uh, and you'll find that on certain games, including I'm sure some of mine. Okay, so now let's use a random number for the X momentum. So we're going to call this function called get random. And what that does is it puts into the D0 register a random number between 0 and 255. And then we need to add some precision because that number is too little. So what we do is we move it into D5 ready to be used as the X momentum. And then what we do, we extend dot word. D5, and what that does is makes that number a negative number between minus 126 and plus 127. And then we swap that number in D5, which shifts it up to the top end of the register, makes it 65,536 times bigger. And then what we do is we shift it down a bit because it's got too big. 
using arithmetic shift right uh, to make it in the right kind of range for sensible momentum. And when we've done all that, it's ready to be used as the X momentum. So let's see what that does when we run the code. Okay, so let's see what happens when we hit the button this time. And now you can see that the rings move in the X direction nicely, and then they fall under gravity. But as you can see, as they fall, they all fall at the same rate in kind of a little line. So we need to probably mess with the Y momentum next and see what that does. Okay, so all we need to do is take that code that we wrote, uh, copy it, and we'll just paste that in again. And this time, uh, this is for the Y momentum. So we'll need to remember to go back and change these registers to D6, which is where the Y momentum should live. And we're ready to run it. So let's give that a run and see what we find. Okay, so we move around, hit the button, and there we're getting quite a nice effect now. They're moving quite randomly, they're falling, not in straight lines. We're getting pretty close to the ring hit effect that you get from Sonic when he hits, but I think we need to give it a bit more upwards momentum when it first starts. So there's a way of doing that too. Let's look at the code. And all we have to do here is add to the results of what we've calculated so far a negative, much bigger momentum. So it picks the random number and then it'll add a definite force upwards to start off. And that's our Y momentum. So let's run the code. And there we go. So you can see they're shooting up high in the air, just like when something gets hit and the rings scatter everywhere. So I hope you enjoyed that quick look at the code. Go in there, mess around, have fun, play with those numbers. You'll get all kinds of weird and wacky effects. And let me know in the comments uh, what you've done. If you make any videos, you know, let me know. And I hope you've enjoyed this. If you did, please like, and as always, subscribe. It helps a load. And I'll see you next time for some more coding. Goodbye.